I love life. You can shape life to be however you need it to be. I want to be a games designer, but that's in itself another escape. Escaping a, a totally different reality that you create. It's strictly not for human consumption. Oh well, what do you do? Jukes, you can do the exact same thing. It's, it's a reality you create in your own mind. You've just got to make sure your mind's not too fucked up so that uh, you win in the end. <laughs> Youth do not just say no. They say yes, and they say yes often. And as time goes on, we have more and more and more things to say yes to. We have to accept that there's a big demand for these drugs. Every time we ban one, the chemists will get around it. Some people think because they're legal, they're safe. Now, of course, that's completely wrong. This is just a fucked up bit. It's shitting, man. At some point, I suppose you, they say you've got to grow up, but why grow old when you can die young? It's different from the same the universe! Do what you can while you can. While you're young. You live while you're young. This is it. This is life. And this is it. <laughs> oh well. Go again. <laughs> Go again. I feel wicked. <laughs> yeah, I feel really happy. Really, really happy. It's nice. I like it. I suppose it's not a terrible place to live. Even though it's just a small, chic little town. But life's what you make it, innit? It's only fun because I make it fun. Where previous generations had heroin, cocaine, cannabis, ecstasy, and a handful of other conventional drugs. Young people across the UK now have dozens of new drugs to choose from. It's a party, in it. Get your rave on, innit? <laughs> I need a sniffing tool. Like many of their generation, Baxter and his friends are using synthetic drugs customised by clandestine chemists to get round Britain's drug laws. There you go. Looking all nice and fancy in a capsule and everything. <laughs> they're legal to buy because they're sold as research chemicals, not for human consumption. It says not for human consumption, which is just a loophole, really, isn't it? But we all know the drugs. Uh, is that five me adult stuff? Uh, did you. Yeah, it's a legal high. Hey, that's mine! No. No. The new drugs are synthesized by the ton in India and China. They're coming out faster than the government can ban them. They're so cheap, you can just give them away. You can spend 100 quid, for example, and you can give it away for days. You could be feeding 8 or 10 people with something. 4 MMC, 3 MMC, 3 MEC. Five APB. Baxter has tried dozens of new drugs with strange chemical names. MAM2201, AM1220, AM2233. He's always come back fine. Like, like, he knows when not to take it too far. That's what I respect about him. I think I'm having some 2CE tonight. 4MMC. 2CI's are alright. 5 me, It bitch me. M1, methylone. methylone. It's mint, but your head sobers up about two hours before your heart does. First time, what's AMT called? What's its real I'll name? I'll methyl trip to me. That one. That was the first research chemical I took. 
if you bang like five to ten, it's supposed to be very, very intense. Oh my god, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> I've been at parties where the whole place is just dead, you know what I mean? And then within 20 minutes of me being there, the whole place is lively and everyone's bouncing around and everyone's chatting bollocks to each other and everyone's connecting and everyone's having a laugh. How was that for you, Perry? Oh, very, very nice. From time to time, Baxter makes a bit of cash selling research chemicals to his friends. He wanted to go on the internet and find these drugs, but he didn't want everyone to know what the, the actual name of the drugs were. Because so he could sell them, so he could like he, he could be the one to sell them, like, so people didn't go on the internet and buy them for themselves. This is Baxter Kane. It's a it's an amphetamine analogue, but it acts like cocaine. So it's more of a party drug. It's got a, quite a high demand. I wouldn't like to say where I got it from. Baxter Kane is ethyl phenidate, a cheap legal stimulant sold online as a research chemical. 50 grams costs about 320 pounds. That's 70 doses. For what it is and how cheap it is and the accessibility of it, I think it's all right, yeah? I love to share. Because when everyone's in the same sort of level, everyone's doing the same sort of thing. That's one of the things I love about drugs. If we want something, we're just like, Baxter, get this stuff in. And you're just like, yeah, I'll get it in. You're just like, yeah. Because like everything he buys off about, like the websites gets sold to it. Where... I don't know anyone that will say, my drugs generally aren't better than what they can get that's illegal. Why do that to yourself? If you want good drugs, you've got a Baxter. Because research chemicals, or legal highs, are so new, the health risks of using them long term are completely unknown. Some are so much more potent if you're not careful. If you haven't done your research, you can just sniff it and overdo yourself straight away. So we all take things knowing that it, over a prolonged period of time and abusing so things will, yeah, yeah, it will, it will have ne ne negative effects on our body and our mind. I don't take the piss, but I just do it. Cause like, I just, that's what I want to do, my mates, what keeps us busy. Life's grim at the moment, and I know as a group, we all sort of need to get wrecked every now and again, just to keep our morale up. Head shops, selling research chemicals and legal highs, have sprung up on Britain's high streets. I mean, you've got the the pellets and stuff down here. These are research chemicals, um, purely for research. None of the products we sell here are for human consumption whatsoever. This is all the correct labelling. I mean, you've got the not for human consumption, you've got the brow uh, hazard triangle, and on the back you've got the, all the ingredients. It's sort of a fresh, fresh chemical on the market, and it's just a research pellet. The industry sort of started online and has been a growing industry online for absolutely years. Yeah. And now that we've brought it into the shops, we find it a lot easier to, you know, people find it more easy to approach, to understand what we sell. I mean, it's a great industry, it's a big industry, and there's a large market for these products. Before research chemicals became big business, the only people who knew about them were psychonauts, connoisseurs who try out new drugs and swap notes online. There's a whole community there, and everyone sort of helps each other out and, you know, gives each other advice um, on what to do and what not to do, safe procedures. Ali's 21 like Baxter. He lives in south-east England. His online name is Chemical Ali. I think I discovered that legal drugs could work as well as illegal drugs when I was about... Probably about 17. There's a new drug on the market. We're going to be ordering some 5-MAPB. It is research chemical, close in structure to MDMA. Sounds interesting, so I'm going to give it a whirl. Simple. Go online, find a supplier, check their reviews on various forums and websites, place a sample order of the minimum amount, maybe a gram. If you receive it and it's great quality, then move up and buy the, the amount that you want. It's pretty expensive, but I found a site with a uh, Valentine's Day discount. 
This is possibly the most exciting and interesting compound in this family of chemicals seen thus far. You've got a clicker, agree to the terms and conditions box, which of course I do, I'm not going to be consuming this. You know, you've got to be careful. Things can easily go wrong, but I think if you take certain steps, you can minimise harm. You've all written your own name to your own address? Yeah. And there's no reason to not do, really. So I'll go for a gram and guarantee delivery tomorrow. Drugs to your door. What more do you want? <laughs> Every year, tons of legal highs are delivered by post. 40,000 parcels an hour pass through the International Postal Hub in Coventry. In the last 12 months, the, uh, the problem has grown considerably. Um, the uh, people importing them are constantly changing their methods, um, different ingredients and different varieties of, uh, of, of parcels. A large quantity from Hong Kong, China, but pretty much anywhere in the world. Clearly, we can't so inspect every single parcel that comes through. A handful of suspect parcels are held back for testing in the examination room. This week so far, we've tested on average 180 parcels. This has come from China. This one was destined for London. You see, they just come in a parcel wrapped in a bit of bubble wrap, generally in a silver foil bag. And that's now given us a reading for a substance called 5-fluoro-AKB-48, which is a legal high. It's a stimulant. It's one of the clubbing substances. I mean, I can never really understand why people take those, because they just smell vile. This one was destined for Middlesbrough. And it's come back with ethylphenidate, which is also a legal high. I've got that back in there. It's not yet been classified as illegal, but because it is not been correctly declared, as I said, it will be seized and it will be destroyed. Toxicologist Dr John Ramsey has assembled Britain's largest collection of drugs, 29,000 and counting. Oh, it's increased dramatically over the past few years. 20 years ago, if we saw a new drug, we'd go down the pub and celebrate, whereas now we see 50, 60, 70 a year. This is 5-methoxydialyltryptamine, and it'll be a fairly potent stimulant, uh, a fairly potent hallucinogen too. Right, so this is methoxetamine, difficult to know whether this actually has, has really gained any popularity. This is ethylphenidate, a minor modification of methylphenidate, which is used as a pharmaceutical. The compounds are completely untested, and we know nothing about them. We know nothing about the potency, the duration of action, the long-term effects, or even the short-term effects of lots of them. And some of these new psychoactive substances, the NPSs, are evolving, they're mutating very quickly. The chemical compounds are changing. Drugs that weren't heard of six months ago have suddenly become fashionable. There are concerns in the public or in the media about the effects of those drugs. And there is actually, surprisingly, quite a big public expectation that if something hasn't been banned, it's almost like the government has given it a stamp of approval. By virtue of it not being banned, it must be something that we're comfortable with people taking. We are keen to say to people, just because they are called legal highs, doesn't mean that they've been given some government endorsement, far from it. So you might be able to buy them, uh, but you certainly shouldn't uh, put them in your mouth, for example. Feels good. <laughs> Feels very good. I enjoy the hit of injecting. I enjoy how hard and fast things hit. That taste. That taste in your mouth. 
tastes like Kem. I like pushing my boundaries to see how much I can tolerate something. It ended up to be quite a lot. Baxter and Rylan are unemployed. Rylan is 19. Their drug of choice is 2-MeO-ketamine, a research chemical similar in structure to the Class C drug ketamine. It's marketed as Kamex. It's uh, another disassociative. I've like been disassociated, not being part of this reality, taking away all worries. And it's, it could be sort of paranoid about everyday life, social surroundings. Take care, Max, and uh, that seems to just go away. Chemical Alley's Valentine's Day treat has arrived in the post. One gram of 5-MAPB, a close cousin of ecstasy, but legal. So this is our inconspicuous package. Not for human consumption. Laboratory region only. You know, this is a pretty new chemical, so you want to be taking this one cautiously. Ali's a student, and his partner teaches languages online. They take drugs once in a while as a treat. I adopted the safe technique <laughs> to taking drugs, if there is such a thing. We're going to do the allergy test, just to make sure we're not going to have a reaction with it at a higher dose, to make sure the vendor hasn't sent us something that isn't this and it's active at milligram, you know, levels. Almost all drugs will cause deaths and cause problems. How much risk are you prepared to take when the only benefit's pleasure? OK, so this is 5-MAPB, which has appeared recently. The molecule has a resemblance to MDMA. It's sufficiently dissimilar not to be controlled by the Misuse of Drugs Act, with a completely unknown toxicity profile, of course, because it's never been tested by anybody officially. If we start wigging out, then we won't take any more. If we get no effect, then we'll proceed and take the full dose. It's not bad. No, uh, that's flicking between 9 and 10 milligrams, so that's sufficient for me. Five MAPB and many of the world's best-selling legal drugs were created by an Israeli-born mathematician, Dr. Z. He wants his real name withheld. The new psychoactive substances, NPSs, that Dr. Z designs are sold in bulk by a Dutch trading company. We've got um, a storage facility here with all manner of NPSs. This is, apparently, a tax-paying, law-abiding operation which imports and exports recreational drugs by the tonne. We're standing in what is more or less 4,000 kilos of materials, 4 tonnes, of pentadrone, butylone, bufadrone, methadrone, methylone, 3MMC, 6APB, 5APB, 5MAPB, JWH, 018, 3-fluoromethcathinone, etc., etc. Each jar contains whew, fragrant crystalline material. From an effect point of view, catecholaminergics are going to give you energy and focus. Dopaminergics are going to trick you into thinking that everything's okay when it's not. <laughs> Cannabinoid receptor agonists cover the whole spectrum of the cannabis experience. The empathogens create more emotions, and they're, they're what you call trippy. Serotonergics <laughs> give you that spiritual experience. This just came in this morning. This is 3MC. 
It's um, a cathinone. It's a derivative. Johan. He's one of Dr. Z's business partners. It says it's being stopped by customs, so they check what's inside. So they, they, every, every, every consignment is being checked. There's just products. Here are just powders. You know, everything comes in, it's being registered, it's being taxed, it's being accounted for, it's being sold. It's being bought in massive bulk and sold in massive bulk. I'm very much focused on the United Kingdom. Probably half of, of all trade uh, relates to the UK. The vendors in the UK are organized, good websites, good you know, accounting procedures. The UK is a, is a very professional and stable environment. Where's the stuff going? Greenland. Dr. Z commutes between Holland and Israel, where he lives with his wife and children. He used to research new molecules for a multinational seed company, but now designs drugs full time. I have personally made, tried, tested some 50 or so new psychoactive substances. I've had about six or seven chemicals that have had enormous commercial success. And I was never able to guess which ones those would be. The market preference does not coincide with my own personal taste. You just do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. When something is successful, you go, oh wow, very interesting. I never would have guessed. Some are comparing the drug to heroin and cocaine. This is methadrone, five grams worth, a so-called legal high, and now moving rapidly up the list of Britain's most sought-after recreational drugs. There's been nothing like it before in terms of the speed that it's hit the market, the extraordinary availability of it, and also the, the price. 10 grams for 100 pounds. The methadrone phenomenon, as you've seen, has arisen with a, an amazing speed. Getting hold of methadrone is as easy as ordering pizza. Methadrone was obviously the most popular legal high ever. In a way, it was a kind of perfect storm, a confluence of at least two separate variables. The first was ecstasy quality had been going down and down and down, and cocaine quality had been going down and down as well. And along came this drug, which was not cut, it was actually what it said on the tin. So you could use quite a lot without overdosing, so it was quite a safe drug. The second thing was it was legal, so it could be marketed. And then the third factor in the storm, and this is, of course, one of the most interesting and, and questionable ones, is that the media got excited about it. When it's on the front page of the Daily Mail, then a lot of people know about it. And so people say, well, what is this? Oh, oh I, I can buy it. So, so, the, so actually the media, in a way, created the market. An empty sachet of the original plant food, manufactured April 2007. In 2003, Dr. Z had created a legal party drug that became a huge hit in Israel before being banned. Three years later, at his day job developing Greenfly Killer for an agrochemical company, Dr. Z stumbled across the methadrone molecule. Okay, which one? I very quickly noticed that it is extremely interesting as a new psychoactive substance. So you let people know about it. All right, Judge. I was approached by a company who wanted to license the molecule. They packaged it up as plant food and started distributing it. The plot thickens. Dr. Z's process for manufacturing methadrone was soon pirated by the Chinese and he lost control of his invention. Anyone could now sell methadrone in bulk. You send an order to your Chinese manufacturer. You send them 2,000 pounds. You receive um, uh, you know, a consignment of 25 kilos 
of excellent Chinese plant food. You sell that at around 50,000 pounds a kilo. You just made uh, a cool yeah. million, hey? Yeah. So half of London was on it, you know. Cocaine dealers would throw their cocaine out of the window <laughs> and just, you know, understand. Right, so. Yeah, because this cocaine was crap. The numbers I've heard was, you know, the UK was doing a uh, thousand to two thousand kilos a week in the, in, the, in the height. The drug that gives a legal high but could be a killer. Should methadrone be banned? Several deaths are being investigated for any links to the drug. This drug is dangerous. If you take it, you may die. So methadrone was banned before I think we had any really good evidence of serious harm. If you look at the data, the, the Home Office will say there was a surge of deaths, maybe 10 or so deaths around the time it was banned, which is after. Uh, we're pretty suspicious about that because there are many fewer deaths now and the sales seem to be pretty much the same. It's very rare to be able to say exactly what did cause a death. It's often the circumstances, and people take multiple drugs. They don't just take one. I don't believe that the true links that, that were there represent anything statistically significant. You don't believe that people died from that drug? No. No. These people would have died had they not taken methadrone. When Mephedron was banned in 2010, the UK's legal drug market lost its top seller. Dr. Z got to work on a new molecule that would get round Britain's misuse of Drugs Act. Why don't you put in a double bond which is undoubtedly not cut by the Act, i.e. legal, and is probably also better because there's less hydrogen sticking around there, which makes this look a lot like a very well-known uh, molecule called um, MDA or ecstasy. They're quite similar, as you can see. If this this is a carbon, this is an oxygen. That's the only difference. There. Woo. Z's new ecstasy-like drug has passed the allergy test. Next step, the full dose. We are going to take the full dose. There it is. 100 milligrams of 5 MAPB. <laughs> Cheers. Down the hatch. We are stimulated. Um, euphoric waves. Sort of wash over you. Eye wobbles. Mm. Slightly enhanced colours. Um, increased heart rate. Tactile sensations. Um, a little bit of empathy. Um, and Contentness, I guess. Contentness, yeah. Yeah, it feels pretty good. It's been an hour since Chemical Alley took his first full dose of 5 MAPB. Mm. Oh, so we're reaching a plateau. Reaching a plateau. Possibly more burning. I don't realise I'm doing it, I don't think. I, mm -hmm. It's annoying. I don't like... I don't like... <laughs> people always point it out to me. I don't like it. <laughs> Can we comment more? Yeah. I would say my moments of unease have disappeared. Am I gurning? I am. I'm presently high. Mm hmm. Yeah, me too. This is when we get really paranoid about having high blood pressure. Baxter and Ryland have injected several doses of 2 MEO ketamine, another of Dr. Z's creations. I'm a horrible person. You're not, Buster. I am. You're not. Fucking me and you. Me and you. Sour revolution together. Really? Yeah. So really? Yeah, this is what we knew about, aren't we? It's two sides of the same coin. This is start a revolution together. 
Please, man. Please. <laughs> so, it's what me and you are, aren't we? The best. The best. The bestest friends. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Fuck for that. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm so happy. Yeah. Oh, my right. God. I'm so, so, so happy. Oh, my God. Is it, is it me and you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's me and you. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Since these scenes were filmed, both 2-MeO-Ketamine and 5-MAPB have been banned. Are you going to run out of chemicals to invent? Well, yeah, if you look at the... Um, Handbook of Neurochemistry in five volumes behind me, you'll see that the brain, you know, run of the mill uses around 500, maybe more, different um, endogenous materials. Uh, it's very likely that every, any one of these chemicals will have um, 10 to 1,000 different analogs. So there's no shortage of materials to explore. Dr. Z's latest invention. It's um, brand new, and so far it is legal. Um, I've had a small sample made so that I could test it to see if what we think about the effect of the chemical will turn out to be correct. We've only made about uh, one gram that's all available on Earth. I'm taking a risk which I have to take because um, I don't want anybody else to be my guinea pig. Once he has tried it out on himself today, Dr. Z plans to put his new drug through clinical safety tests before it is made available to the public. This is a completely new way of doing things. First testing at great expense and then bringing out to market. The testing uh, is about half a million pounds in animals, and then half a million again in human subjects. The vendors will pay. They will be the ones making the money from the sales. Then if we don't see any uh, detrimental effects in rats, dogs, pigs, and ultimately in human volunteers, this chemical will be regarded as safe. Do your drugs sometimes not work? Very often. Very often. Um, I think maybe one out of four will work. Um, maybe one out of five. It's really hard to say. It's been 35 minutes and I can feel a tingle, which is the harbinger of things to come. If I could describe it as something else, it would have to be I had four shots of vodka, a drag on a spliff, and um, maybe a little bit of uh, morphine, kind of a cocktail, all kind of very, very mildly, gently um, taking effect at the same time, but not in a, any debilitating way. I mean, I'm still stalk, talking straight, I'm thinking straight, um, but I can feel the, those sensations in the background. I feel that I could take anything on, but I would prefer to just um, brood and ponder. Look at photo albums of my childhood. <laughs> um, write long text messages to my wife. <laughs> yeah. Put my children to sleep.
it could take the edge off a really, really stressful day without impairing performance. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, whip out your buns. We have a winner. A winner. A winner. Oh shit! What do we have? <laughs> We need to swim out and graffiti them all, make them all look green and pink and yellow and pretty. <laughs> I haven't got a job going at the moment, so I just have to do what I can do. I mean, I've already got some stuff out to do, just to get some money flowing. Possibly take a few dots down, probably. I just need to get myself back rolling, get myself out there again. Baxter has ordered some ethylphenidate online. He's invited his friends round for a Baxter Cain session. My nose is dripping. It's one thing that's bad about it, it fucks up your nostrils. It definitely does some damage. <laughs> For Baxter's sake, that it's good. <laughs> Listen, someone offers you a line, it's just... I think it's become a point now where it's impolite to turn it down. I'm not frazzled, but I'm not all there. <laughs> long, mate. Yeah. yeah. Don't let Baxter get our clothes, because we won't get them back. Yeah, I know. I don't need drugs. I just I feel the need to have some fun from these. Somebody looks beautiful. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Like diamonds making in the sea. What a magic it is. That was a better release than sniffing that god awful Baxter King. <laughs> Aren't you just a different kind of drug dealer? I'm a very different kind. First of all, I'm not in it for the money. I don't go forward by maximizing my profit. I make enough money to support myself and my family. So you do make money out of selling your drug designs? No, I would call making make a living. Yeah, but I'm, I make a few thousand pounds a month. They make a few million. Look, the uh, the scaled-up synthesis, synthesis for mephedrone, which I invented, must have generated somewhere around a quarter of a billion pounds in the UK during the time it was legal. I didn't make any of that money. None. None. Why none. Why should I believe you? What? Why should I believe you? You don't have to believe me. I'm not going to force you. You, you can... Um, I mean, and, and no one does believe me. So I've had my taxes examined and, um, and my lifestyle um, uh, scrutinized. And uh, it seems that um, my bank account and my lifestyle tallies with my story. Ethylphenidate, camphetamine, weed, ketamine, magic mushrooms, acid, 2CB, 2CE, 2CI, 25I and bore me, 25C and bore me, 25B and bore me, 
flethadrone, cocaine, crack cocaine, amphetamine, methamphetamine, 2FA, 4FMA, EM2. 62 different types of drugs that I can remember. I've definitely had some mint, mint times in drugs. I guarantee you I've loved every single thing on that list. But we're not all Baxter, we don't love everything that goes into us. For a lot of time I haven't cared about myself. I couldn't be happy just being around people. I just seem rude and miserable and nasty and I don't like being like that. I'm the court jester, the king, the psych, the fucking the priest, everything I want. <laughs> but it's what I like being. The only time I can be that guy is when I'm happy. And for a long time I've been happy. And it's a lot of drugs. I was taking the drugs long, long before my head was messed up. I've just sort of medicated myself. After trying all the newest drugs on the market, Baxter has fallen for one of the oldest. <sighs> Much better. <laughs> Probably able to sleep tonight at least. Heroin's like a beast. We've stopped hanging around with Baxter since then. Don't want to see him. Oh, it's too much of a bad influence. Instead of him being in control, it's the drugs in control. Flax decay and that stuff is like, horrible. Three days of sniffing that, my nose was in bits for like about two weeks. It messed me up. Not as many of us do drugs now. But I think it's like, because of people like Baxter that like, have put them off. We would have all been taking drugs, but none of us would have touched any legal highs unless Baxter hadn't have been there with his hand out saying, hey, take this, try this. It's a phase for some people. It's like a way of life for others. Not me, though. <laughs> if you get used to pleasure being available on tap, you lose motivation. When it becomes too easy to just collect the prize, then you're going to be like those rats in the cage that had a button that they pressed for a hit of cocaine and they just pressed it until they died. Because it's just too easy. The idea is to create a, a new order in which um, vendors sell responsibly, users use intelligently to stop abuse and to stop prohibition. For each new drug that is banned and driven underground, there's another ready to be launched. The market is growing and there's legal money to be made. Consider it a very young business. There's a lot of excitement around it and a lot of promises. And in 10 years, I see beautiful packaged products. You know, one is a red pill for making love, the other one is a green one for a great social evening, and a blue one for, uh, for, uh, for a chill. Uh, you buy those packages, you know, you know exactly what it is, it's tested. A room of excitement. That's what it is. We're trying to create a system. Before my children are of the age where this is dangerous for them. And if it does work, cocaine, heroin, um, ecstasy, LSD will have been forgotten. I'm going to bed now then, are we? <laughs> Not quite. Even though we've had some fairly terrifying experiences, <laughs> I think dogs have made us closer. Yeah. In the past, I mean, we, we might have uh, had a bit of a moment of uncertainty and taken mm -hmm. a psychedelic... Almost sort of like re reseals re that bond kind of thing. Reconnects. Reconnects yeah. it, yeah. yeah. By no means is it a way, you know, 
is it an answer to, to fix a relationship, relationship problems? Yeah. I mean, the relationship has to be strong in the first place. Recently, coming away from drugs, sort of like a long healing process. In the past three years, 70% of those days have been me being off my head <laughs> in some way or another. So I don't remember myself growing up, I just grew up. It's like, I was 16 and now I'm 19. There's a fine line between use and abuse. But when you're having fun, you don't understand that as such. My mum talks to me as if she's been through it all before, and I've talked to a lot of people who've just been through the same thing, exactly the same thoughts as I have, like, been there and got the T-shirt and then came back and been, like, got on with their lives. Support information about drugs can be found online at channel4.com slash support. Well, it's the end of an era. Skin's Rise comes to its dramatic finale next tonight over on E4. Next here, a celebration of the good things in life in Random Acts. <laughs>